Welcome my friends, it's Alliteration Gaming. Today we have another video on the Almighty Transformers TCG. This time we're taking a look at the uh, the other deck that I've been playing around with this game so far, Shockwave. Uh, Shockwave Optimus Prime, technically. Um, so as some of you may know, Shockwave is my favorite Transformer, so I have been absolutely dying to try and find a deck with him. This card instantly made me play this game. Um, the second I read it, I was like, this is so cool. I don't know anything about the game, but that ability is so cool. We're we talking like hand control, burn disruption for Shockwave. Completely fitting, absolutely amazing. So I knew I had to find some deck to fit this character in, and this is what I've found so far. Far. There could be something better out there to play Old Shockwave with, but this is the best thing that I've found so far. It's been testing really well, and so I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. But before we get into this start profile, I want to give a quick shout out to Top Deck TCG. Really, really, really cool website. Reached out to me and do a little bit of collabing. Um, they have singles for the Transformers TCG, but they also do like links to podcasts and articles and sharing multiple videos and stuff. They do a lot of like information. It's kind of like a hub for TCGs. Really cool website. Don't just take my word for it. Go there, check out their singles list, and if you go there, place an order, use the promo code Alliteration Gaming, gets you 10% off your whole order. There'll be a link in the description. Go check these guys out. Now, on to the deck profile. So our two characters here are going to be Decepticon Shockwave, the only Shockwave, and Optus Prime Battlefield Legend. So... We're going to go over Shockwave first because it makes a little more sense as he's kind of like the star of the deck and everything kind of revolves around him. Optimus is powerful, but the rest of the deck kind of makes sense once you start to see Shockwave and how everything works for him. So Shockwave, um, we're going to go to alt mode first. So in alt mode, he has six attack, three defense, which is really, really big. And we play on that a lot. And 11 health, which is not too bad. When you flip to him... Each player draws two cards. Now, that doesn't seem that great, doesn't seem that bad either. You both need to get two cards, so like, eh, you know, I guess. But when you flip into bot mode, he just loses two attack, which isn't that bad. Four is still decent. Six is six is big, so like, can't really, can't really complain too much. But in bot mode, he has a super powerful ability. When a card is scrapped from your opponent's hand, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. This is not like, you know, just once per like a whole scrap. It's like each individual card they scrap. So like, automatically without anything in the deck, this is good. Because like, you counter a lot of things. Um, Dinoboss want to play their Dino Chomp. You're going to have to take some burn for that. Um, most decks play Inspiring Leadership. That's two burn. Like, a, a, a lot of things. A lot of things want you to discard cards or to scrap cards from your hand. So this ability is good. But we play on this ability hardcore to get a lot of free burn damage. And you're going to see that in all of the actions that we play. Because there's lots of actions in the game that can get cards out of your opponent's hand. So my thought process was... Well, if we're going to play Shockwave and all these actions he wants to play, why don't we play him with another card that can chain actions? So here's Optus Prime Battlefield Legend. This card is an absolute monster. So in vehicle mode, first of all, first of all, vehicle mode, um, he has 6 attack and 3 defense, same spread as Shockwave, so really, really good, and 14 health. So these guys are both pretty big. They are hard to hit over, too. That's what's important. And when you flip into truck mode here, you get an action from your scrap pile to your hand. So with how reliant we are on actions, that already makes a ton of sense, right? Um, and this effect is really, really good. It helps us keep the, the the consistent plays going. Make a lot more sense once you actually see the actions. But the real the real value of this card is in bot mode. So in bot mode, he uh, loses one defense. He trades one defense for two attacks. So he's swinging for eight. This card, again, is a monster. And then after you flip battle cards for his attack, and before your opponent flips their defense cards, you can play one of the actions that you flip. That ability is what makes this deck roll. This is actually insane. Like, this card is is, I would call it borderline broken. I don't know. It depends on, like, you know, as they as we see more cards, but there's a lot of things you can do right now in any deck, really, with this card that can just be insane. This, this card can really make a lot of leaders good, so it was kind of an easy fit to pair him with Shockwave. This is sadly just a two-star team as Shockwave comes in 11, Prime comes in at 13, but, you know, it's okay. I don't really think there's anything, you know, I haven't really been able to find anything better for to play with Shockwave, and as a two-star deck, it's, it's not bad. They are hard to hit over. You can keep them alive. You really just have a lot of trouble with, like, the faster decks and stuff like that, um, but we're just going to go right on straight to the rest of the deck uh, because it'll make a lot more sense as we get there. So we're going to start with the actions. This is the meat of the deck, the literal meat of the deck. This is, the deck is almost entirely actions. Um, so the first action I'm going to show you guys is the Almighty System Reboot at three copies. This card is what makes this deck go around. Uh, each player scraps their hand and draws four cards. So right off the bat, you know, this is almost always a three or four burn damage with Shockwave, and it's 
it's just, it's so good. You're trying to chain these as fast as you can. The second you see the first one, you're four cards closer to the second one. You can flip it with Optimus and do it mid-battle to get some burn off. Like, it's so, 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 so strong. This card is... This card is so good. It also, like, as far as, like, you know, it pertaining to you, you don't ever really mind doing this because, like, you usually are going to try, you're going to try and burn your whole hand with other things and then play this at the end to go, like, mad value. Um, sometimes it helps your opponent out, but, like, you know, that's fine. That's all up to RNG. Can't do anything about that. Uh, and it does have a white pip, which is pretty tight. Pretty tight. There's a lot of white pips that we actually want to play in this deck, though, so sometimes it's a... Uh, not too tight, but you know, it's it's okay. Nothing you can do about it. You have to play this card no matter what. Um, I probably, if this card didn't exist, I don't think this deck could exist. Um, that's what I'm going to put it. Um, next, we play pretty much the, the backup system reboot. Three copies of Security Checkpoint. This is an action that says each player reveals their hand and scraps all upgrades from it. So this card is fan- Fantastic, 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 fantastic. Um, this basically never hurts you. I think you're only you, we, we play a very small amount of upgrades in this deck, and a lot of them are quite uh, quite expendable. So it's really fine. If it's and at the end of the day, if you're discarding and your opponent's discarding, you're burning for them, and they're not. As long as they're not also playing Shockwave, uh, Big Brain, um, the Mirror Match for this deck could be really, really wild. Um, <laughs> sounds actually terrible now that I think about it. Anyway, uh, but this card is really, really good. Like sometimes this card will actually just straight up win you the game on its own like you could you could hit like a possible three discard with this and then your opponent just has nothing for our team that has happened to me it it's it's ridiculous how good this card can be sometimes if they don't have ways to recur their hand like it's crazy it also has double blue pip which is really strong because i'm gonna explain now this the main deck here is mostly blue pips we trade our orange pips mostly because a lot of the cards we want to play are blue and we can we just kind of take advantage of the the high defenses that these guys have being able to put them at four and five defense um quite quite easily and then being able to stack blue pips you consistently can defend at like six or seven shield and it's very very strong it makes them very hard to kill because like you're not trying to deal as, as damage as much fast with them you just want them to stay alive so you can keep attacking and using their abilities um because you just want to keep like the chains of these cards burning essentially like system reboot into and then swinging optimus and then hitting like this or hitting a sec a second system reboot like why would you why do you need orange pips when you're burning like you know seven or eight right there um, so that's uh, that's security checkpoint. Very 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 good card. Next we're playing three leap into battle. Uh, this is just another really really good card. It has the blue pip like we want. It's just simply an action that says one of your characters gets three attack until the end of turn. If you flip if you get it while flipping with Optimus in battle mode, it's basically like hitting three orange pips. Uh, really really strong. Really really strong. Nothing 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 to say about that. There's basically no reason not to play that it's just it's always good no matter what's going on uh next we're playing three incoming transmission uh this is just you know our very simple draw two cards then put a card from your hand on top of your deck uh this card is so good um it lets you stack actions uh it's like you can play it and then stack like normally you want to play this to stack like orange pips right but in this deck you say screw that and you want to stack like you know system reboot or security checkpoint or really any of the actions we're going to go over right now like it just lets you set up anything you want when you're attacking with optimus prime that you can basically hit um so you essentially just get four more free actions with it which is which is tight uh free actions are are very tight um next we're playing three rapid conversion this says flip one of your characters to its other mode this is really good because i'm going to talk a little bit about how you want to attack with these guys so normally you know you're going to start out in vehicle mode right so normally on your turn one you, you, you think you want to just go hard with Optimus first, but you don't. Because then you go and you go this and you flip like one of these and you're like, cool, discard your cards. But Shockwave's not in bot mode yet, which is sad face. Now, if you go second and you open Rapid Conversion, that can make that a lot better because you can flip Prime just for your flip for the turn and then Rapid Conversion to flip Shockwave and then go in from there. You've got your combo, your combo set up, your combos online immediately, which is really good. Um, if you go first, though, since you can't play any cards, obviously, what I always like to do is I like to flip Prime prime and then attack with shockwave he's still got a really good attack um now you do offer him up to your uh, your opponent's attack for the their first swing which can be bad sometimes like it puts shockwave behind on health but it next turn you transform shockwave and then you get optimus in full power hopefully you're gonna use some of shockwave's burn and then you play it out from there um but rapid conversion just kind of helps like speed up because if you go second if you go second they get the first turn 
on you to hit whatever they want, then your turn two is flipping this and attacking with this if you don't have this. And then next turn, you then finally get to flip this and attack with this. So your opponent gets like a full like turn and a half essentially on you. They get the first turn and then a full power turn while you just get one gimp turn before you actually get your combo online. So against stuff like cars and stuff like that, that, that slow, that like cars and that cons, that's that, that, that lack of speed there can be an absolute death sentence. You have to get your combo of those, these, those, these, uh, both being in bot mode online really, really fast. So rapid conversion just helps that out. It's also good in general. Like it can make plays. Like if you get to the point where you have both of these in bot mode in your set, you can just go like flip prime, grab whatever you want, whatever action from the scrap pile, then rapid conversion to flip prime back and then, you know, go hard. Or like if you go hard with prime on a turn with a system reboot play, you know, system reboot play, then you can just, you know, flip him, grab system reboot again, reuse it. And like, you know, it's, it's fine, it just helps. Like these, they both have really good flip effects. It lets you sometimes use shockwaves, but his doesn't come up as much because most of the time, instead of both of you drawing two, you'd rather just, like, you don't really want to flip either of them from bot mode um, much, because, like, you, then you don't have your combo online anymore. But if you are going to flip, you'd probably rather just go for Optimus's direct, like, grab any action you want from scrap, rather than trying to, you know, find... Uh, find something good in a draw two, especially when your opponent gets to draw two, two, uh, draw two as well. Uh, so next, obviously we're going to play three brainstorms in this deck. Uh, this just says you may play an action, then you may play another action. So it gives you plus one action, um, in totality for the turn. Uh, this card is very, very good. Um, you know, this is in, in a deck that's, that's just completely action spam based. This is obviously going to be a good card. You can make so many insane plays with this deck, like going brainstorm into system reboot. And then after you draw four, you can play another one from like the actions you play um god forbid you know your opponent if you can stack this on top of your deck somehow and then hit it when you swing an optimus lets you play two actions from hand mid battle it's absolutely insane like optimus would brain battlefield legend optimus would brainstorm is it makes some of the nuttier things that i've seen so far happen in this game so it absolutely has to be in there Next, we kind of have like um, a few little tech actions. We got two copies of Inspiring Leadership. Um, this card is solid in here. It's got our blue pip that we want. Oh yeah, uh, Brainstorm, Leaping Metal, all these have these blue pips that we want really, really good. Um, inspiring Leadership just says draw three cards, then scrap two cards from your hand. Perfectly fine. It's just a little bit of extra digging power in the deck if you find yourself not being able to find like, you know, these really good actions that you need so far. This just helps speed that up. Um, it is a little slow sometimes. Like sometimes I really, really don't like seeing it because it's too slow and I need to be playing other other things but when it does go off it's nice hitting it with optimus is really nice just getting that nice filter it it, it, it helps a lot sometimes um it's kind of going like in and out the deck so like it, it's you know I'm, I'm still a little iffy on it but you know it's it, it's it's still in there for the time being i don't mind it this top row though are pretty much like staple three ofs in this deck i don't think you can mess with that at all but the next ones we're gonna be talking about are a little more flexible as we go through them next we have two copies of swap missions this card is mm, sometimes it's great sometimes it's not so great sometimes it's straight up dead but sometimes it wins you the game um this says untap one of your tapped characters then tap one of your untapped characters so say you know you swing like this with optimus and then next turn you have this and you all you can play this to go stand optimus to untap optimus and then tap shockwave so you're getting more optimus attacks which is absolutely what you want so you're trying to be abuse that sweet sweet ability and it's even it's even nicer too when you swing an optimus and then hit the swap missions uh, with Optimus' flip, so you get to untap him and then tap Shockwave um, in the middle of the battle. So then now Shockwave is going to tank the hits, and next turn Optimus gets to go in again, which is really really nice. Sometimes like it's awkward because like if you go first, if you go first, you're going like this. Then turn two, you're going like this, and Swap Missions is obviously dead because you have no, you have no uh, no character to tap and untap. Um, it's 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 a pointless gesture uh, gesture. So. Sometimes it's kind of dead. Um, if one of them dies, it's obviously a completely dead card, which is really sad. Um, it's just in here with a two of now. I kind of like it, though. Sometimes it's been really, really handy. I'm reluctant to take it completely out the deck. Um, more testing is going to determine this card's fate entirely, much like this next card. The next, we have two, just two copies of I Still Function. This says, return one of your KO'd characters that has 12 stars or fewer to the battlefield and repair one damage from it. At the end of the turn, KO it. Uh, this card's broken. This card's straight 
straight up broken. Um, you can now, so it says 12 or, 12 or fewer starters. So we can't revive Optimus with this, which is balanced. Um, but we can revive Shockwave. And normally our lines of play in this deck, like I said, on turn one, you know, you go this and this. Our lines of play involve giving them Shockwave first um, as far as as far as damage goes. So it's not too bad if they kill Shockwave first. If they do kill Shockwave first, like it sucks because you only have Optimus. But if you get this, it's fine. But then if they focus Optimus too hard, like Shockwave... If you keep drawing all these, you know, ways to discard your opponent's hand, Shockwave is just going to, like, body them with burn damage. Um, and it's really, really, really nice. Optimus is also kind of, like, easier to defend because you can put um, the Ion Blaster on him, which gives him plus one defense, which, you know, spoiler alert, in a deck with Optimus Prime, I play the Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime. Um, but Isol Function is still really good in here. I mean, it has no pips, which is kind of like, you know, eh. It sucks, but it's the only card in the deck with no pips. So it's fine. You know, I, I can forgive it. Um... The one of the more insane things is if Shockwave has been KO'd and you swing with Optimus and you hit the ISOL function in the middle, you can just go, hey, 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 now Shockwave's back. You know, get him. Like it's that 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 play is that play is ridiculous. Um so sometimes this card is really, really broken. Um I could see it potentially coming out in the future, but at the same time, like it makes your opponent have to focus what you want them to focus. Um, which is really, really nice. It's kind of like, you know, it's it, the way it works with Sludge, where, like, you can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to kill that first. So I like it a lot, this deck. Um, then lastly, we have just two copies of Ramming Speed. This is just to scrap an enemy upgrade. Um, this is kind of just to get around Force Fields, really, because, like, Force Field can... You really need, like, your giant, like, eight swings and six swings to, like, matter. So Force Field can kind of body you sometimes, so we like to try and get around that, because we can't always burn them out of their Force Field range, because Shockwave does let them choose what gets burned. Um, so, we have a couple copies of Ramming Speed in here. It also gives us a nice little orange pip. We have very few of those in the deck, so it, it's it's welcome here. It's welcome here, but we, we do like our blues very much. Um, so that's all of the actions in th this deck. There are 26 actions in this deck. This deck is very action-based. You want to be seeing them with Prime all the time. You never want to hit two upgrades on a flip of Prime. It feels bad, man. And they're all really, really crucial. They're either really crucial to how the deck plays um but then like these are just kind of like other cards that is like you know, really 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 nice um so you really really need all of these actions basically these are going to be actions no matter what they are like you want this high number this number has been perfect for me um but the upgrades are just as important in this deck so we're just going to start going over them now so for our first upgrade we have one that just says play more actions um <laughs> this is multi-mission gear it's an armor that when you put it on a specialist you may play an action and then it gives plus one defense as well now shockwave our our lad here is a specialist so this is very very strong this puts him at like a really beefy four defense which is kind of insane and then lets you play an additional action for the turn so we're essentially running around with six copies of Brainstorm in our decks. Um, this card is really, really good. I absolutely adore this card in here. Definitely one of my favorite cards in the deck. Like, being able to turn your upgrade into an action is a game changer on some of these. Like, it's so good. You can pull so many plays out, out of nowhere with this. Uh, next, we're playing the three copies of the Almighty Force Field. Um, upgrade Armor. If the upgraded character would take five or more damage, scrap this card and you take four damage instead. Um, this card, I have a kind of mixed feelings about this deck because the way we've built it very blue focused here, we're consistently defending for like six or seven. So a lot of times this doesn't get to proc as nice as nicely as we'd like to and in total it is a it is a white pip and in total we have 12 white pips in this deck which is kind of a lot sometimes it, it does get a little unfortunate like flipping white pip into white pip feels very bad so these i've been potentially thinking about um cutting for blast shields uh which is just the um when you uh defend with it uh it gives you plus two defense and then after you have to scrap it um seems really nice because like it seems like you could just body a lot of attacks but i also feel like if i don't play force fields in my deck i will get bodied by dinobots so still kind of thinking about that um perhaps we could see like a two two split by cutting something else um later on in the deck but may something, something to keep in mind force field is a good card like like a, like i've said before i haven't built a deck without force field in it but at the same time like you know maybe it's not as great in this deck still not really sure about that just yet so that's all of the armors we play. We just play six of them. Again, this deck is very upgrade light. For utilities, we only play three. We play the based data pad. So data pad is a utility upgrade that says when the upgraded character attacks, you draw a card. Then you may put a card from your hand on top of your deck. So 
obviously, this is what we're using. This in tandem with incoming transmission have six copies of cards that can stack the deck with more actions for Optimus. So again, normally with a card like this, you're wanting to try and put orange pips on top for your attacks, but we're trying to put whatever actions we want. So data pad just existing gets can like confirm, let you play another action from your hand, whatever you want. Um, for turn which is really really strong like this is just a very very strong card and in this deck its interactions with optimus battlefield legend is really really freaking good and that does round out our wet pips so see we have three six nine twelve and system reboot will never go below three it's the crux of this deck this this by the same nature like it says up your actions is too good rapid conversion is too it's too important to see that really quickly so you can get your combo online so we can't reduce any of those like those are nine wide pips that have to be in the deck so that could be more motivation for force field to get cut or drop at some point but I digress, you know, that's something I'll figure out more with testing. Um, so that's it for the utilities. After that, we have upgrades. Our upgrade is really simple. We're playing three of the grenade launcher um, because it's it's grenade launcher. You play this in every single deck. Like it's it's too good. Plus four attack for uh, for the battle. And after the upgraded character attacks, you scrap this card. Totally fine. Let's Optimus hit for 12. Combine that with a leap into battle at, you know, either for your action or if he flips it, hitting for 15. Like this lets Optimus straight up body people. It's ridiculous. Also, let's shockwave swing for our cool 10 in alt mode. Like you, you can hit really good numbers in this deck already. Like your stats aren't bad. Grenade launcher just helps that even more. And it is an orange pip. Um, so it kind of helps out a little there. It makes our, uh, our uh, 10, no, 11 orange pips in the deck, which is, you know, low, but it's fine. Um, the last weapon is Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime. So this can only be put on Optimus Prime, but it gives him plus two attack and plus one defense. Absolutely insane. Makes him 10-3 in bot mode, 8-4, four, 4 in truck mode. Totally crazy, like such a good upgrade. You know, you have to play three of this. It's too, it's too, 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 too good. Your opponent's going to want to get rid of it. It's so strong. Um, you have a lot of really good like upgrades in this like between data pad and ion blaster. If your opponent doesn't have like any form of consistent upgrade removal, I f they kind of just like get bodied by this deck to be quite honest. Cause like if you can't get rid of these strong upgrades, it's you just can't do anything. Um, and that is the whole deck. So I want to talk about real quick about a couple other things that could be in this deck. I've tested around with them. Not sure how I feel about them yet. Um, the first is other forms of burn in the deck. So this is a burn deck, um, but I don't have any direct burn damage uh, cards in the deck. It's just Shockwave. For a long time, I played around with Photon Bomb here. Photon Bomb is an action that deals two damage to each character, so your own as well. And my, my thought process with that is, oh, it's mad value, right? Because I, I always have at least two characters are two characters at most and then my opponent is going to have probably at least three um if they, even if they have two it's still a break even right and i'm burning a lot in general so it's still it's still better for me right but the more i played it the more i kind of realized that burning your own dudes in this deck is kind of bad because you're really really relying on these big defenses to like to to protect your your health pool because together you only have a pool of 20 uh 25 health so you really want to keep that um alive and it, you just try you make it harder to get to by boosting up these defenses to like four and five so even though you might get more damage uh, more damage spread on their characters the damage to your guys is probably a lot more valuable so this card did get it also has no pip so it's like uh you know this card did get cut from the deck uh, i tested it for a while i thought it would be really good in this deck um still not entirely sure how i feel about it it could come back in could come back out in future testing we'll just have to see that's one i'm still pretty undecided on uh, another good burn card is one shall stay and one shall fall. Choose one of your characters and an enemy character. You deal three damage to each of them. Again, three damage is huge, especially when you're already burning them a lot. But at the same time, three damage to one of your guys is just as huge. Again, no pips. Kind of kept it out the deck eventually too. Um, but could happen. Maybe maybe one day. This is a little more what I'm comfortable with now. I'm going to test and see if I have you know problems closing out uh, closing out bots um, from there. Uh, there's a couple other neat weapons you can be playing in this deck. Um, I've seen a uh, multi-tool. This is just plus one attack, and when you put it on a specialist, you may play an upgrade. So you can put it on Shockwave, and then you get to play an additional upgrade. Um, I tried this out for a while, because like I would go, oh, I play this, then I can also play like this or or this on Optimus, and that's tight, right? But I also could have just played this or this on Optimus in the first place. Like All I'm really getting out of this is plus one attack on Shockwave, which is like not that that relevant i mean it helps especially across multiple turns but not the greatest thing in the world it does have a nice blue pip though um it could eventually come into the deck um but i really like uh the, i really like the six weapons like it's um it's really nice another one is like flamethrower uh flamethrower just simply gives bold two um 
I think it'd be pretty solid on Optimus just because you get more flips, um, more chances to get actions you want. Most of the time, we're, we're probably just relying on trying to like stack our actions on the top of the deck. So we don't really want to play this. It also has an orange pip, which is kind of eh. We want more blue in this deck so we can be even more defensive. Um, speaking of blue drill arms, this is another not bad choice uh, for a weapon. Plus one attack, and when you put it on a character, scrap an enemy armor if you can't draw a card. So again, this was kind of more just in there for the idea of like, I'm going to help get rid of uh, uh, force fields. Um, over, eventually, uh, previously I was playing this um, over like the ramming speeds. Um, more trying out the ramming speeds now, because like, you're already playing a lot of actions in this deck, so it's like, do you want to commit your action to destroying force field, or when you could commit your upgrade to destroying force field, but a lot of times, your upgrade commitment is going to go somewhere else either or, because you have really good upgrades. Um, so, this is what's in the deck right now, this is what isn't, you know, that could change, I don't think this card should be really slept on, because it's just really, really easy armor removal, but, you know, it, it might find its way back in there if I just keep getting bodied by force field too much, but we'll, we'll see. Um, the next four cards I want to talk about are what I consider the shockwave traps. So I've seen a lot of people try and put together things with shockwave, you know, of various different kinds. Um, and a lot of times they want to just spam all of these discard uh, cards. And I don't think that's very smart. Like you do want to play in a shockwave, but you don't want to play bad cards just to get shockwaves burned. At that point, you could just be playing something with more attack and be attacking. Like we know why. Well, you know, why I play all this middleman stuff. So a lot of p cards that I see people playing with Shockwave, first of all, is Disarm. Return all upgrades on a character to their owner's hand with a blue pip. You'd think it'd be good in this deck, but, because, like, you come up with security checkpoint and just get rid of all their upgrades. But, like, most of the time your opponent will not have more than, like, two things on a guy. Like, realistically speaking, this isn't going to do much. Even if you can get, like, Disarm into a checkpoint or Disarm into system reboot, it's not going to do much more, especially, like, if it's going to be your action slot for that turn. We're already banking that you need um, either this or this to set up one of these or brainstorm to be playing both of those. And if you're brainstorming, there's better things you can be playing. Another one is Computer Sabotage. Your opponent chooses three cards from their hand and scraps the rest with an orange icon. Um, again, this card is also not very good. The opponent will never have much more hand size than four, maybe five sometimes. Like, not really doing a lot right now. It, it, it's very minimal burn, and there's better stuff you can be playing for it, I think. It's lack of a blue pip, too, does not synergize with our defensive strategy. I think maybe one day this card could be good, like if we ever get, like, you know, a lot more draw power exists in the game, like with power creep, or if we get, like, a total hand ramping deck, like, definitely not a card to sleep on by any means, but I don't think it belongs with Shockwave, it's just not that good. Next, we have two cards that do more or less the same thing, Disruption and Disruptive Entrance. One of them is look at your opponent's hand and scrap an upgrade from it. The other is the same thing, but you scrap an action. Um, these cards are not good. Um, this, like, one for one, even though you get, like, to view their hand and to get rid of whatever you want it's not good it's not worth your action for the turn this one is kind of redeemable but like not enough just because i blue pip this is a nice way to get rid of grenade launcher before it goes off but you also kind of have like better ways to do that between those two if your opponent's packing a grenade launcher, a grenade launcher somewhere in their hand that they haven't played yet these two will get rid of it as well so like it's really it's not these are not at all worth your action slot or the spots of the deck that's really all I want to talk about for all the cards that you should slash shouldn't be playing in this deck. Um, as far as how this deck has performed, this deck has been performing really well, really, really well for me. Um, it absolutely shreds tanks with all their burn damage and the high defenses. It's really hard for tanks to hit. They have to rely on Pierce heavily, heavily, he heavily, which Pierce is really the crutch of this deck because it just blows through your defense so hard. Doesn't matter about your whole defensive strategy. P Pierce really, really cucks this deck, um, but they have to really commit to it, so it doesn't hurt you that bad. Um, I've been testing against uh, like the weaker decks too, um, like the smaller decks. I mean, like uh, so, like planes, um, planes and plane variants. Um, it really chews through those too. Like they just don't hit hard or fast enough to really like get your guys down, and you you just kind of blow through them. Faster decks like Cars or Insecticons have been giving me trouble because if they go like if they go first and they have like turbo boosters and stuff like that, like they can at some point get like a three attack advantage on you and it's really really hard like they'll kill shockwave quick really really quick and then you just have to waste these big optimus swings on each of their like little characters and uh they're more than likely going to just like totally <laughs> totally overwhelm optimus at that point um so those decks can be hard to deal with i think those are probably just you know bad matchups like this is a this is a vulnerable two 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 character combo deck 
So I think faster stuff, unless you really, really just draw perfectly and go off, faster stuff is usually going to hit you really, really hard. But aside from that, like the deck has been testing super well. Dinobots are not the worst matchup in the world because with two characters, you kind of deny them value of Grimlock's uh, trample, his overkill ability, until the actual like end of the game, basically. Um, so it's not uh, it's not too, too bad. Prime can one-shot like any of the Dinobots, kind of, if you go, like, really, really hard on them, and they don't play a lot of defensive pips. Um, for for another one of my, you know, home brews, this deck has been going really, really well. I think it may just be the best Shockwave deck out there right now. I'm currently looking at testing some other stuff. I really want to test Shockwave with, like, a pseudo-Insecticon deck that can abuse Bug Bomb, but I'm not sure too much about that. I have a, I have a Scrapnel in the mail right now, so by then I'll be able to start testing Insecticons and going through that, because that's the, the other deck on my radar right now. But that's about it. Uh, I don't think I have any more to talk to you guys about this. Um, you may very well see an, up, an updated deck profile version of this sometime in the future as I get more testing with it, because this is what I'm going to be primarily playing with because I love Shockwave. Um, so expect more from the future. Expect more videos, more uh, more deck techs, more more new stuff, more discussion stuff. Um, I'm building my locals ever so ever so uh, slowly here and there. Um, a lot of us have stuff now, so we may very well see some match videos in the future. Take the camera out to the shop, do that stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for all that. Lots of exciting stuff coming. Until then, see you guys next time. Alliteration out.